Do you want to build an environmentally friendly home that is not only good for your health, but also for your hip pocket? Sustainable House Day is a nationwide event happening Sunday, September 15. This home is one of many that will be open on this day. I sit down with Positive Footprints, the builders of this home. Thanks Chi and Jeremy for joining me. Uh, this is a beautiful home. I'm, I'm just so astounded by just what a sustainable house can actually look like. I understand that this is one of many houses that you've actually done. Uh, can you tell me about your company? Yes, yeah, so our company is called Positive Footprints. Mm -hmm. um, we started, well, back in 2001 mm -hmm. and with the idea of creating a company that uh, could design and build sustainable homes to make it easy for people to live with a low impact lifestyle. This house, um, when did you actually build this house? We built this in 2013 and this is one of uh, what we call our nine star series. Mm -hmm. So um, what that means, we're not just making up stars, but the mm. um, all new homes have to achieve a six star level. Um, and the STAR system uh, actually goes, uh, it's based on some CSIRO software um, that house design needs to get rated against. And, and that uh, the system goes from zero stars up to 10 stars, with zero stars basically being living in a tent, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and 10 stars being a house that theoretically needs no mechanical heating and cooling to maintain a comfortable living temperature. Wow. Um, yeah, so this is this is nine stars, and to put that uh, in perspective, uh, a nine star house is is about eighty percent more efficient than uh, the six star, which sounds like other stars, but that's that's, mm. the, that's the minimum that we have to reach. So okay, um, yeah, but nonetheless, one star off ten, that's still a great accomplishment. Yes, extremely, and and we have we have been able to design ten star homes. It's, mm. It is it is possible, um, but we just find that um, the cost effectiveness of going from an already extremely energy efficient home, yeah. and just getting that last little bit, you have to put in quite a lot of effort to get that last little bit of gain, gotcha. uh, and a lot of that effort equates to quite a bit of money. And <laughs> it, and so we we found it's more cost effective instead to instead of going right to the 10 stars, go to eight or nine stars mm -hmm. and then put your your hard-earned cash, if mm -hmm. you like, um, into photovoltaics or uh, water tanks or um, a, a green electric vehicle or, or, or something else instead. Gotcha. So okay. You get a bigger bang for your green buck. Uh -huh. So can you uh, talk to the viewers about what, what some of the design considerations you had in getting this house to nine stars? Um, so all our houses are based on solar passive design principle, mm -hmm. which means it takes into the elements that your block uh, has intrinsically, like the sun, the sunlight that falls onto your block, uh, which direction the summer breezes are coming through, mm -hmm. um, and also the earth that you have. So we would say uh, use thermal mass to uh, maintain a gradual temperature change in your house. We use good insulation to protect the heat you put inside your house um, mm. so it doesn't just goes out the door window as you as we speak um, and also we do check with the where the sun's shining to make sure that we have glazing that allows us to capture the sunlight mm -hmm. uh, and, and energy into your house in winter but then we have eve to stop that sun and heat coming in in summer and in winter for example uh, well, we're coming towards spring now, but um, during this winter, it's been quite cold. What this house has done is we have a lot yeah. of glazing <clears throat> on the north side of our uh, house mm -hmm. because, you know, we're in the southern hemisphere. And that means that the sun comes in and then shines on our um, thermally massive floor, which is polished concrete. Mm -hmm. And also we have a lot of internal bricks in the house that would... Uh, capture that heat during the day and then when the temperature drops outside uh, the material releases the heat out to the uh, general living space mm -hmm. and so we don't need to turn on heating until much later into the night so that's how we sort of save energy in a passive solar design. Mm. Mm. Great and uh, so you've shown me some of the great tech you have in this house such as your uh, thermostats like well, not thermostats they're temperature thermometers mm -hmm. I guess yes um, they're connected to like via wi-fi and so they activate different things can you talk, talk to some of those? Yeah so we tried to um, just put in some smarts into the house 
not necessary to do. Mm. Um, really, the smartest person, the things in the house are people. <laughs> so um, if you know your house, you can run it quite well. But um, we also wanted to trial a few different ideas in this house because this is not only one of our nine-star homes, but it's on also our house <laughs> that, that we live in. Um, and, and so we put, um, for instance, we've got temperature sensor at the roof level and temperature sensor at ground level. And uh, we've got a fan, so uh, we can, f the fan will automatically come on if, uh, if it finds that the hot air has risen up to the ceiling level mm -hmm. and it's hotter up there than, than down at ground level. It'll come on and just slowly mix that airspace. It doesn't take long. Mm -hmm. And then, then it'll go off again. <laughs> right. um, that's one thing. Um, we have uh, high windows, uh, clerestory windows, um, in our popped section just behind us here. And uh, how we use that is if it's cooler outside and getting too hot inside, usually in summer, um, we can set a temperature that those windows just open. But before they open, they will ask that the weather station outside, is it cooler outside? If it's hotter outside, it's not going to bother opening. Right. But is it cooler outside? Yes. Is it too hot inside? Yes. Let's open the windows. Um, and then once those parameters change, they automatically close. Right. Um, we've got our uh, awning that covers our, our big um, north bifold opening here. Mm -hmm. um, and once again, we can set that to go out at certain temperatures and, mm -hmm. and, and come in um, to provide extra shading, if you like. Um, uh, what else we got? We got um, we got a hot water service uh, upstairs um, that actually looks at the 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 temperature of the solar hot water and how hot the water tank is from the solar hot water heating. Mm -hmm. And there's an issue at the moment with um, with gas booster on the back of a solar hot water in that if the solar hot water is already hot. 100 degrees, perfectly hot. Yeah. It still goes through um, a booster, and the, the idea of the booster is, is if it's not hot enough, the booster will turn on yeah. and heat at the rest until it's the right temperature. Yeah. Um, however, what happens, even if the water's hot enough in the tank, it goes through the booster, the booster will turn on, will fire up, will release gas, mm. then it will test the temperature of the water and no. say it's too hot, then it will turn off, and mm. so it just wastes some gas. So yeah. uh, we just have a little temperature sensor on the tank that controls the power point and says to the booster, don't even bother turning on. So it just say a little bit more gas. That's great. Um, yeah. Uh, and the last thing um, that we do with the, the, the temperature sensors is we have a... Uh, a sensor actually in in the the ground and the reason we have that is because we have some pipe work that goes down into the ground um in a big ring and um outside the the footprint of the house and those pipes can pipe air from the house down into the ground bring it back in the house in in summer um just as another energy efficient cooling strategy uh the temperature under the ground stays really stable and nice and cool around about 18 degrees in summer right just like in cooper pd how people live down in the ground to mm. stay cool mm. um, we want to use the fact that it's cool down there and to if our house is overheating we can set it to start sucking air out taking it down and loop through the ground and the air comes back nice and cool that 18 degrees that's awesome and so how far down is uh, the tubing system uh that tubing system is two between two and a half and three meters down um and it, it, it's a nice fact that mm. uh, just about anywhere in the world, if you go two and a half to three metres down, you will get to the average climatic temperature. So if you added all the temperatures up through the year and you averaged it by 365 days, mm -hmm. you'll get an average temperature. Mm. And, and uh, so potentially there's, there's an access to that. Great. Yeah. So um, to help out the, the viewers, um, some might be interested in like the smarts that pull the, those different um, things together. Mm. Is that like a particular product or is it a series of products? Um, it's, it's actually designed, it's, 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 it's the MacTech system, uh -huh. um, but uh, it was designed, it's sort of a custom system in that it was designed by one of our previous clients. Okay. We, uh, early on in our building career, had a client called Jason McCabe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, Jason. <laughs> um, and he was an electrician who had worked at um, Mawson Hut in the Antarctic mm. as their energy efficiency person. And mm. down there, it's really important to make sure you're not wasting power because yeah. they're all alone, they're isolated. Um, and so he's brought some of the smarts of, of um, efficient electrical know-how yeah. back and uh, he put it in his house. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, come over here and you can, can you try it on mine? And yeah. so he, he, he did. did. Yeah. 
Awesome. Jeremy, when you showed me around the house, I noticed that this floor and, well, the, the bricks, they're on the inside of the house. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what materials you've chosen and why? Okay, yes. So, in Australia, we've got a lot of brick veneer with brick on the outside. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that brick on the outside isn't really doing anything for your house other than just as a cladding. Um, actually, the weight of the house is carried by the frame. It's really just there just to stop the weather coming in. However, bricks can be extremely uh, useful um, mm. because they're a heavyweight object. And if you put heavyweight objects inside your house, it takes longer to heat your house up and longer to cool it down. Um, and so if you combine heavyweights inside your house with good insulation and good window placement, double glazed windows, um, then you get a very even temperature inside your house. Um, and then if there's enough a good balance of windows to the mass, you get a very even temperature that happens to be around about 20 degrees, which is what we like to live at. Mm. Um, and so it, 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 that's one of the reasons why we've got the, the mass inside the house. Um, the downside of heavy weight objects is they're often very energy intensive to make. Mm -hmm. And so while you might be gaining on the energy efficiency to run the house, it's taken a lot of energy to make the products and they sort of cancel out if yeah. you're looking at a holistic green point of view. Yeah. So what we've chosen is recycled bricks. So these bricks have been used before mm. um, and now they're getting a second a second life. Uh, and with some of the walls we have bagged, so they're just white, um, but they are still brick. Mm. But the other ones we have featured on the inside mm. to show not only this is this is a, a material that is working hard for the house mm. it's a material that is recycled and it's got a it's got a history and it's got a a, a beauty in, mm. in in the fact that you know it's not it, you can see that it's had little dings here and there and it's got character to mm. it so mm. um that's why the recycled bricks um the, the the floor so concrete is a is a fantastically heavy mass material. Mm. And a concrete slab is a great way of spreading mass evenly throughout the house. Whereas brick walls depend on where the wall is, that's where the mass is. Mm. Whereas concrete tends to go all through the house. Um, however, concrete again, because of the cement component in concrete, cement, uh, for every tonne of cement that's made, a tonne of carbon dioxide gets released. Oh. Um, so what we've done, we've taken out 60% uh, of the cement in this slab and we've replaced it with waste products, slag and fly ash, one from the iron ore industry, one from the coal industry in fact, sure. um, <laughs> both waste products. And we put them in the slab with the other 40% of cement and those elements have a very similar bonding mechanism, a bit different but a similar outcome as yeah. cement does. Um, and also in this lab, the steel, there's a steel mesh that goes through all concrete uh, structures. Yeah. Uh, that steel is 100% recycled steel, so um, that's kept the embodied energy of a very low. Mm. The aggregate, the stones that you can see, that is recycled stones. So that's old concrete that, that's either been overordered on other jobs, come back to the yard, it's been washed through, put in a, put in a pile, and we've selected that rather oh. than the new pile. <laughs> so uh, it's just make, about making clever choices and environmental choices. Yeah. Um, and the last thing that we did, we went down to Visi Recycling okay. and uh, where they've got m literally mountains of recycled glass. We went there with our trailer and asked if we could borrow a trailer load. And they said we could, thank you Visi. Um, <laughs> we then washed it and uh, we've then when the concrete is wet, we threw it into the top of the concrete. And that allowed mm -hmm. us when we then subsequently allowed the slab to dry and then polished it. It's, yeah. it's come up with beautiful greens and browns and blues. Uh, yes, so I, I noticed that and it looks beautiful. I've got to say, and everything you've done to, you know, um, ask of companies, like, well, what was the concrete company like when you said, can you put this different aggregate in? Were they like, no way, or they were supportive? So they, um, I've used a few different companies mm. and, uh, I, I've usually had to talk to the technical people in the company mm -hmm. and said, well, how far can we push this? Because most company, concrete companies know you can put this stuff in. Mm. Most of them will will not want to go beyond 20% replacement of cement, maybe 30%. Mm. Though high percentage replacements are possible. So it's, it's yeah. a matter of, I guess, developing relationships with, with companies. Great. And, uh, 
and then uh, as a builder, you know, you take on a little bit of the risk, but we've, we've found that the product has proven itself. Mm. Yeah. I remember when we did our first job in 2003, mm. um, we have a special code that when you order, mm -hmm. the people typing in the order doesn't know this code. You have right. to tell them this is the product I want. Right. We got the code from some tech, tech yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, not something that is mm. readily available because mm. it's not published anywhere. Yeah. Um, but I think it, I think it's a bit more commonplace now. Great, yeah. And so, Chi, um, the, the obviously using the materials that you've chosen for mm. the house, can you tell me why? Why is you chose uh, recycled bricks and the different agri the concrete? Well, uh, I guess everything we we use, we, everything we consume, has a a price, you know, an an environmental price, an embodied energy cost. Mm. Um, and that also impacts, we don't see it, uh, but that also impacts on the footprint uh, that we, we as a human population put onto the planet. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's to be able to use recycled material and minimize that footprint and then also to showcase them and try to encourage more people to use recycled material. I think that's, uh, that's our aim. Okay. Um, besides using recycled material, there are certain things that we cannot uh, use recy as recycle, such as the frame of the house. Mm -hmm. um, so we do choose the, the timber that we use, we do choose to try and use um, FSC certified uh, if possible. Otherwise, we choose from a good plantation management product. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other up and coming product uh, that can substitute timber is bamboo. So bamboo being a grass that grows mm -hmm. To maturity every five years. Uh, it's a gr great renewable resource. So in this house we've used um, bamboo stairs and bamboo flooring as you will see upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, there's also lots of different types of timber that you can choose to use. There's definitely reclaimed and recycled timber mm. um, that we use in joinery and also uh, parts that you would use hardwood rather than plantation pine. Most of the frame that is the structure of the house is plantation pine, mm. which is uh, which is fine and we've got good management for us in Australia. Yeah. But there's a lot of hardwood that um, there is really isn't a good source mm. uh, in Victoria or in, in Australia. And yeah. um, there are other alternatives too. There are some finger jointed hook pine that we have used. Uh, I believe that door there that the sliding door you'll see it's uh, you can see the finger joint in the timber mm -hmm. but actually we didn't paint it over we actually think that's a that's a thing of beauty mm -hmm. itself Great. Um, so that means that they're able to use small pieces of timber and glue them together mm -hmm. and then we don't have to use a, you know hardwood yeah, tree right. for it. That's great. Mm -hmm. And you pointed out earlier your handrail was it? Was made from um... a recycled carry. Oh, sorry, right. that's a handrail of the stairs. A recycled carry. Mm -hmm. um, so about the balustrade. The balustrade. balustrade sorry, yeah. is, uh, was a telegraph pole. A telegraph pole. In yes. Previous life. Yeah, with the the holes that used to carry the wires through. That's right. It's amazing. And we think it's actually more beautiful than definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. New timber. I think any any time you get materials with a story to them, uh, people people love that, and people love. Um, Telling other people, you know, look, you know, look at this, look at this bench. Here. We we put in a uh, in a bathroom in, in one of the homes, and uh, the benches were made of old MTG uh, seats before they did the, the new uh, stand, mm -hmm. and um, you could still see the, like the green, some of the green paint on it, and it was, you know, it was a real feature. Great. So I noticed on your website that you speak to about healthy homes. Can you share what you've done in this space? Yeah, well, health is extremely important. You want uh, you want the owners, the people living in the house, to thrive, and uh, so a sustainable home uh, has a couple of things that's healthy about it. The normal home does not. Mm. Um, firstly, is just by its nature, a passive solar house. You're going to be having a lot more light and a lot of warmth coming into the home, even temperatures. So that in in itself is a good start. Um, you're also much more likely to be wanting to get summer breezes in with, with the breeze paths so you're getting fresh air coming through. That's also great. Um, we try and orientate the homes to a nice private open space out the back, which gives you a bit of an incentive to get outdoors. So that's all good. Mm -hmm. um, however, 
being a, in Melbourne here, we are what's called a heating climate. So most of the year we are trying to heat our homes to a nice comfortable temperature. And that involves keeping our doors and windows shut most of the time to try and keep the heat in. Mm. And, uh, and the issues that we have with um, modern houses or modern materials in the houses is the, a, a lot of the materials these days are not just solid materials. They are amalgams of things yeah, put together with glues and binders. Mm. And those glues and binders um, are not 100% inert. They do release chemicals into the environment. And if you have your house locked up tight, those can tend to build up over time. Mm. Uh, it's like that, uh, that new car smell that you get when you go into a new car. Mm. Uh, that's actually a really bad smell for you. <laughs> and you should be having your windows down for the first year or so of wow. uh, driving in a car until that smell goes. Gotcha. Uh, but, but that's what we're trying to limit. We don't, um, you know, we don't want people to get headaches. I remember when, when I first started um, in this business, um, painters would often have problems in that they would be at the end of a day of painting they would have headaches and and you know they get hospital conditions because of the the nasty chemicals coming out of the paint that they're smelling all the time yeah. um uh, and paint is one of the really big things that we want to concentrate on because it covers so much off the surface of a house mm -hmm. uh, so it can be a big contributor to uh, to what they call um well, volatile organic compounds coming out into the atmosphere, VOCs is mm -hmm. what you'll see. Yeah. So we choose uh, zero, in this house was zero VOCs paints, so paints that have been made so they're not, they're not releasing that. Um, another other place we've used low VOCs, so just look for that on the can if you have a <laughs> decent paint. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really important, uh, especially to, to, to young families with kids growing up uh, or having a baby, you know, you, you want to have a nice, healthy environment for mm. your family. Um, the other thing to look at is the the timbers, that, the timber trims in the house, the skirting boards, the architraves, the kitchen cabinetry, very rarely is that solid anymore. Usually it's a uh, medium density fiber board or, or, or chipboard, mm -hmm. um, very small bits of fine wood that is that's glued together with um, a phenyl formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a known hu human carcinogen. Yeah. So you want to limit the amount of that because again, it does let chemicals out into the atmosphere. Right. Um, and so what you want to look for there is, the Australian standard is E1, but E0 is available. So you're wanting to try and source E0 uh, MDFs or particle boards mm -hmm. in those products uh, as well. Um, and those, yeah, those, those are the main thing. If we don't have carpets in this house, but if you if you have carpets as well, that's another big surface area that you want to concentrate on. Make sure that you're not choosing a product that will off gas. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So and these are sort of things that people don't see. You know, they when people choose a the kitchen, they look at how what it looks on the surface um, and maybe the bottom line, but they don't mm. actually know what is what's happening on the inside. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. With, with all these things you've uh, said so far around design, uh, the building material, um, the synergies of all those things, the glass, the paints, uh, have you found that running this house has been cheaper than maybe a house you had previously? Oh, most, most certainly. Um, being a nice style house, that means we use a lot less energy to, to keep ourselves comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I mentioned previously before, but we have double glazed windows as well, mm. so that he, he help keeps the heat in and also keep the heat out. Mm -hmm. um, and so our operational energy is quite low. Um, I don't know the figures off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yep. okay. So um, the average Australian home uh, produces about well, there's a few years old now, I think 2014 data. Um, but back then, the average dual fuel Melbourne home produced 11.9 tonnes of carbon dioxide per year mm -hmm. from its energy use, combined yeah. gas and electricity use. Um, so almost 12 tonnes of carbon dioxide. Now, uh, about uh, a bit over a third of that goes to heating and cooling. Mm -hmm. um, a, bit over, a, a, a bit less than a third of that goes to hot water. So heating and cooling um, is passive solar design, good insulation, good windows, that's sort of that. Mm -hmm. um, 
hot water, we have solar hot water system with a gas booster. Yep. A lot of our clients these days are going all electric and they're going with a uh, uh, heat pump, a high efficiency yes. heat pump, yeah. um, which I'd probably suggest now mm -hmm. um, because the efficiencies of those are getting up and they're cost effective. Um, but uh, a solar hot water system with gas booster is also a very good option. Mm -hmm. um, and that really gets rid of most of your hot water um, allocation of those greenhouse <laughs> gases. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the last third comes down to what you put in the house as far as appliances, lights, mm -hmm. um, you know, your TV, your fridge, everything else that you do in the house. Uh, and that comes down to if you are building, I would suggest getting new versions of your appliances if they're old ones because mm -hmm. Things have really come on in the last 10 years as far as efficiency and choose one, the higher the star, the better, go, mm. go for those. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then once you do that, um, we, we found that if you build well, you, you spec the house with efficient appliances uh, and you put in a, an efficient hot water system, uh, around about a three to four kilowatt system is enough to break even. Mm -hmm. an, three to four kilowatt photovoltaics yes. electricity <laughs> producing yeah. on the block mm -hmm. um, system. So I'm talking panels on top of the roof. Yeah. Um, and, you know, th these days, that sort of system, you're looking at about 4,000, 4, 4 to 5,000. Mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, all of your energy is gone. You know, all your energy bills are gone. You'll still have to pay... Um, connection charges. You exactly. can't get around that, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And it'd be great if the government actually... Um, just decided to make that a, a, a bit of an incentive for people mm. um, because really what's happening is on a beautiful sunny day like this we're producing more power than we need we're sending green electrons out into the grid because mm. we're not using them at the moment no lights are on there's okay the fridge is running but we're producing a lot more power than it's charging that uh, the average bill um, is around about two thousand three hundred dollars um, for, for a standard home yeah. um, so we're saving you know most most of that um, and just about anything sustainable that you do to your house has a, has a ten you know has a, a ten year or less payback. Yeah, actually, a few years ago, uh, when we had our house open for sustainable house day, we did do a an audit. I think we produce more energy than we use over a year. Mm -hmm. However, um, the energy we export, the money we get back, does not equate them energy that we use at night when our panels are not yes, operating. Yes. And then, of course, there's the dollar a day supply charge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I guess that's where the battery exactly. technology will come in Definitely. when it makes economic sense. Yeah. yeah. Are you looking to battery as your next purchase? Or? Um, I think so. I think once we, once we get um, an electric, once our car is ready for a new car, okay. and, and if we looked at an electric car, I think that's when it would also make sense to, to get some batteries sure. as well. We could buy a Leaf and that could be your big battery. That'd be lovely. You know, yeah, does, yeah uh, exactly. Reverse exactly. charging. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So look, it's, it's amazing these days. There's a lot of technologies that are coming together mm. and um, photovoltaics coming down. Um, heat heat pumps and reverse cycle air conditioning is getting very efficient in what it does mm. uh, so you know now when you're making your power if you're not using it you could be putting it into hot water um, you can also in a house like this with a lot of thermal mass if it's a hot day in summer when you're making a lot of power mm. uh, you may as well be turning it on cooling your house down so mm. that as soon as the sun goes down you you turn off the the, the uh, reverse cycle air conditioning mm -hmm. and your house is beautiful, yeah. you know, um, and well insulated and it'll just keep that cool throughout the night. Yeah. Mm. All right, uh, Chi and Jeremy, thank you so much for allowing me into your beautiful home here. I, I doubt, I no doubt the viewers have learned a lot and it's amazing what uh, Positive Footprints is doing and I wish you all success moving forward. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you for the opportunity. Great. Yeah. Let's spread the message. Great. Cheers. Cheers. The work here that Jeremy and Chi are doing with Positive Footprints is amazing. The home just feels comfortable. It, it feels like any other home, which is, I guess, key. To get homes that are sustainable, better for the environment, good for your health, and cost you less. What they're doing here is bringing all those different things together, and in turn, it helps you, me, and well, the world in general. I'm ready to applaud that. If you want to come and see this home, 
Sunday, September 15, is Sustainable House Day. Use the link down below to register for the event. And when you come along, please, whatever home you visit anywhere in Australia, do make sure you bring a gold coin donation because the homeowner is uh, going to be raising uh, funds for their chosen charity. In 2018, more than 33,000 people visited more than 200, 200 homes across Australia. And this initiative by Renew is great and got to be applauded and let's see more of it.